We're moving into 2015 and I wanted to do an update on Google and LSI and see what the current state is because there are still some people out there who don't see the association between the words, theme words on pages and um, ranking in Google and a lot of people still think it's all about the backlink. Now backlinks are still important and that's another story because Google Penguin has really made it very difficult to get good quality backlinks. But let's just have a little look here. Now back in 2004-2005 if you were in the SEO business or you were building websites then most of what you heard was about PageRank and PageRank was very important. In fact PageRank in a way still is very important even though Google seemed to be dismissing it now but the, th the things that build up the page rank are always going to be important because the thing that builds up the page rank is the backlinks to a page and whether Google say page rank's not important or not is irrelevant the backlinks to the page are relevant so whether they call it page rank or something else is immaterial but back in 2004 and 5 I started noticing patterns and I had a chat with Michael Campbell about this as well and he'd seen the same sort of thing back as early as 2000 and what I was noticing was that more and more pages in the top 10 in fact in Google altogether had core sets of words and phrases in there almost as if Google were moving away from just relying purely on backlinks to rank pages to actually using the content on the page and after a lot of research and a lot of reports that I actually released I put out a course in 2006 called the Creating Fat Content course and that course came with a tool that helped gather keywords and phrases based on the pages ranked in the top 10 and the idea was that you wrote articles that included the same sort of words and phrases and that meant that your articles were going to be themed just like the top 10 pages and therefore had a much better chance of ranking. Now there were a lot of skeptics and one of them in particular I remember um, debunked my in fact content course and my software and said it was all a scam and that I was scamming people and so he wrote a full review on his website and I don't shy away from those things I mentioned it in my newsletter and a lot of my newsletter subscribers went over to his page and started leaving comments and within a few hours his comments he closed his comments and deleted every comment from my own users and just wrote a note saying I'm sorry content comments are closed because they were spammed so he obviously liked to give it out but didn't like to hear that the opinions of people were actually using my course and the people who were actually following the methods that I was teaching. A, a bit later on after that we got um, another report coming out because we started having all this information now coming out about LSI, that Google's using LSI, blah blah blah. And there was another report that came out that said Google doesn't use LSI and this was by a very well respected um, SEO. And the thing is he was being a little bit cagey here and a little bit sneaky because Google at the time and probably still don't use LSI in the strictest terms. LSI is a complex algorithm, a complex mathematical calculation if you like and at the time Google did not use that, that um, exact equation. However they were using their own equation which amounted to the same thing and whether you call it LSI, whether you call it theming, it doesn't matter. The, 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 what, when people start using a word to describe something it becomes common use. Like the word Google, people say I'm going to go and Google such and such. What they really mean is they're going to go and search for such and such but Google has become the word that replaces the word search in the language for many people. And in the same way LSI became the word that replaced theming or theme words, that type of um, th those types of phrases and that's what LSI meant to the most people. So that's what we call it. We call it LSI. Google's using LSI. Whether it's the exact LSI equation or not is irrelevant. But it, did a, it, it brought a lot of traffic to that particular SEO and he got a lot of publicity for it so I'm sure his, his article did a lot of good for him. But that was back, I mean we're talking years ago now and in even one year in SEO terms is a long time so does Google still use LSI and that's what I want to have a look at here. And I decided to do a test. Now if you have read my SEO 2014 book or even if you read one of the earlier versions SEO 2012 or SEO 2013 then you will have seen an example in there about epilepsy which showed that um, what well, basically what I did it, sh it showed that were the articles in the top 10 and in, in the top of Google were themed and what I did was I took three different keywords epilepsy epilepsy treatment and ketogenic diet these are all related to epilepsy and what I found was that all of these all of the pages that ranked in the top 10 for these three terms contained a core set of keywords like epilepsy and drugs and medication and seizure and, and, and things like that but they also had their own unique set of words and that's the table you're looking at now 
under epilepsy we have activity in the brain, Atkins diet, blood sugar, causes of epilepsy, epilepsy medication, epilepsy surgery, ketogenic diet, parts of the brain, so on. Under epilepsy treatment we have a lot more words and phrases that are related to the treatment of epilepsy and that shouldn't really come as any surprise. So both of these both of the groups of pages ranking in the top 10 for these terms have the same core set of epilepsy related phrases but then they're fine tuned with more specific sub niche phrases like under the treatment we've got um, aid for seizures, anticonvulsant drug, uh, anti epileptic drug, medications, anti seizure medications, control, ketogenic diet and so on and then again with the ketogenic diet we have the epilepsy general phrases and, and words but we also have these more specific ones all related to the ketogenic diet, high fat diet, high intake of fat, seizure control um, and, and talking about kids on the diet so there is this niche vocabulary but this example is a few years old so what I wanted to do was do another study and this one was done today which is the 30th of November 2014 so we're moving into 2015 and I'm going to do a similar sort of study here now I want to just briefly mention the way I analyze pages because when I do a theme analysis of web pages I concentrate on the theme words and not phrases and in terms of this type of example here what I'm talking about is I would concentrate on words like activity, brain, diet, Atkins, sugar, blood, causes, medication, surgery, ketogenic, brain, diet, medicines, temporal, vagus, these sorts of words and phrases rather than looking at pages that contain the, the entire phrase and some people ask me why I do this and firstly I'd like to say that the theme phrases are made up of words so by looking at these theme phrases I can get a group of theme words quite easily that would fit these niches so that's the first thing to think about now the second point is that theme phrases are used an awful lot less on pages because there's possible variations and if a phrase does not exist it does not mean it's not important it may mean it exists in another form so if we have a look back here we have a phrase here controlling seizures now if controlling seizures seizures only appears on one page in the top 10 does that mean it's not important well no because it we could have the other pages using phrases like epileptic seizures oh sorry epileptic control which basically means the same thing seizure control and the, the point is that phrases because there's more than one word in these phrases they have a lot more variations and so pages might use one variation or another and it doesn't mean just because a single phrase doesn't appear on any of the top 10 pages that it's not important it just means that those pages are probably using a different version of that particular phrase treatment of seizure so what I do in my analysis instead is concentrate on the words that make up these phrases epileptic control seizures treatment medications those sorts of things and I don't see any point in ranking phrases according to how many times they appear in an article it's not really relevant because you know all of these articles have a, a core group of theme words and you do get a little bit more emphasis with the theme phrases but at the end of the day the theme phrases are made up of the theme words and so I include all of the words that make up the theme phrases so that I have all of the important words so if I was doing an analysis on epilepsy treatment I would find the theme individual theme words that appear on most of the top 10 pages and then I would also find the phrases like this and then I would get the words from these phrases so in my analysis I would include the word adverse effects aid seizures anticonvulsant drug uh, anti-epileptic medications and so on and then I would basically go back to Google and I'd say right check all of my theme words again and only give me the ones that appear on seven or eight of the top 10 pages and that's how I come up with my core group of theme words and this is all done in Web Content Studio which makes it fairly easy so anyway the epilepsy experiment showed that theming was alive in a well back in 2012, 13, 14 but um, what's happening now so I decided to do a new experiment and I took another keyword phrase health benefits of krill oil which is something I'm interested in and I use Web Content Studio again to come up with theme words which are these ones and also theme phrases which are these ones and again I made sure that I used all of the words from these theme phrases converted them into theme words which gave me a bigger bunch of theme words and then I checked them against the top 10 to make sure that they were being used on most of the top 10 pages and I came up with a final list of theme words what I then did was I ran these theme words against pages that ranked um, 1 to 10 in Google 
I ran them against pages that ranked 100 to 109, 200 to 209, and 300 to 309. And I wanted to see how many or what percentage of these theme words were included or being used by pages ranked at those various levels in Google. Now, if theming is correct, you might think that, well, the, the ones in the 1 to 10 range are going to have use the highest percentage. And that's natural because I got these theme words from those top 10 pages. And then as you move down through the SERPs, 100 to 109, 200 to 209, 300 to 309, we probably get a drop off and we get less of these theme words and phrases being used. So let's have a look at the results that we got. In position 1 to 10, they used 86% of the theme words. As I said, that's natural because I got those theme words from those pages. Down in position 100 to 109, they use 65% of the theme words. Position 200 to 209, they use 72% of the theme words. And position 300 to 309, they use 62% of the theme words. So there is a drop off from 86 down into the 60s and 70s, but they're still using a very high percentage of those theme words, which implies that all of the pages down to 309 are well themed, or at least using the same core set of theme words, and that Google is aware of them, and it's using those as some sort of ranking basis. Now, one of the questions I'll get asked is why only to the 300s? Why am I only looking down um, 1 to 10, 100 to 109, 200 to 209, 300 to 309, and not further down into the thousands? Well, that's because the thousands don't exist. If you do any search on Google, it doesn't matter which keyword term you use, um, rank your, uh, go to Google settings and change it so that you should see 100 results per page, and then just scroll to the end of the results, and you'll find that there's only a few hundred. In this particular case, Krill Oil, there's 381 web pages that Google are showing. It says there, in order to show you the most relevant results, we have omitted some entries very similar to the 381 already displayed. If you like, you can repeat the search with the omitted searches results included. So what Google's saying here is there's only 381 articles in Google that it thinks are unique enough to show in this group. And what I'm saying here is that those 381 are all themed, and that's one of the things that Google is looking for. All of the pages in Google are themed. And we saw that. We saw high percentages. 65, 72, 62, and then 86 at the top. Pages that are not themed do not appear in this, what I call, authority set of 381. If you're good enough, you appear in the 381. You appear in the Google authority set. If you're not, you're going to the supplemental results. Now, the word authority set was something I termed back in 2010 when I wrote an article. In fact, I wrote a PDF called Google Authority Sets. If you're interested in reading that, you can find it by searching Google, or here's the URL, it's easyseonews.com forward slash google dash authority dash sets, and you can download the PDF there and have a look at that. Now, this is exciting, the fact that all pages in Google are themed, because it means Google is using theming, it's using LSI, or a form of LSI, it's, use, it's looking at pages, looking at the words on the pages, looking for synonyms, looking for related words, and ranking pages that have them. It expects that certain articles will have certain keyword phrases in them, and if they don't, then the article probably isn't covering the topic properly. But it's also very scary, because what it means is, if you're not theming your keywords, if you're not, sorry, if you're not theming your articles, if you're not theming your web pages, then chances are you are not going to get into the Google Authority set, and you are not going to rank. Forget ranking 1 to 10, if your pages aren't themed, you're not going to rank in the, at all in Google. You'll be one of these ones that is left out because it's too similar or not good enough to be displayed. So your content has to be good enough. It has to include the theme words and it has to be good enough and different enough to tell Google, I deserve to be in the Google Authority set. So the underlying theme here for me is pages must be themed. Now, some of you still won't be convinced. Um, if all the pages are themed, as I suggest they are, then it should be possible to scrape keywords from any article in Google and see a similar pattern of high usage. In other words, I should be able to scrape the keywords from pages ranking 200 to 210, use those theme words, and I'd still see the same sort of high usage of those theme words, even in the 1 to 10, 100 to 110, and 300 to 310 ranges. Because if, if the pages are themed, they're themed, and, the, and they contain the theme words. So I should be able to grab those theme words from anywhere in the SERPs. So I decided to test this. I used the same example, health benefits of krill oil, and I uh, ran a little scrape of Google to grab the URLs that are ranking in those 381, and I picked out the URLs that rank between 300 and 309, and then I used Web Content Studio to analyze those pages and pull out the theme words from those pages. I then 
Um, I also found theme phrases as well, and I converted those into theme words. So I got all of the theme words, and then I ran those that final batch of theme words, a big batch, it was a few hundred, against Google, and cleaned them up. I chose only those theme words that appeared on at least seven of the top. Uh, sorry, at least seven of those pages, ranking 300 to 309. So I picked the theme words from 300 to 309, and then I checked and only used the ones that appeared seven or more times on those pages. And then I did a similar analysis. I checked how many of those theme words were being used by pages in the top 10, 100 to 109, 200 to 209, 300 to 309. Just so you can see, these are the theme words I got from the pages ranked 300 to 309. And these are the theme phrases. So. I took these theme phrases, I took out all of these individual words, plugged them into my theme words, ran them against Google, only included theme words in my final analysis that appeared on seven or more of the pages ranked 300 to 309, and then I ran them against the articles ranking in various positions in Google. So position 300 to 309 on average use 75% of the theme words. These are the pages where I scraped the theme words. These are the ones I gathered the theme words from, and they're using 75% of the theme words. Now, because I only included words if they appeared on seven or more pages, that sounds about right. However, look up here, 1 to 10. The pages ranked 1 to 10 actually use 77% of these theme words. So, pages ranked 1 to 10 use 70%, that's more than 77% of the theme words that I'd collected from the pages ranking 300 to 309. And if we look at 100 and 200 ranges, we see 66 and 69%. So these pages also are using high percentages of theme words, which I gathered from the pages down here. And this can only mean one thing. It means that the pages in the top 10 and further down, those pages that are found in the Google Authority set, those pages that actually rank for a term, are well themed. And if you don't theme, then you're not going to get into the Google Authority set. You're not going to have a chance of even ranking. So your first problem is making sure your content is themed. Once it's themed and you get into the Google ranking, it doesn't matter where you're ranking, as long as you get into there and you're ranking, then you can start worrying about the other factors. If you need to build backlinks, then fine, build some backlinks. And that will help push you up the Google rank. Make your content more unique. Make your content something that isn't available already in the top of Google. Look at those top 10 positions. They're your competitors. Once you get into Google and you're ranking for a term, the top 10 are the pages that are your competition. So look at them. How can you improve on them? What can you include in your page that isn't already found in the top 10? How can you force Google to look at your page and say, we really need to include this in the top 10 because this is special? And that is the job of the SEO moving into 2015.